Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, I will demonstrate four different types of microphones that you can use for your video productions or for podcasting or studio use. We have this, which is your classic dynamic vocal microphone. I have a large diaphragm studio condenser microphone. We have a USB version of a large diaphragm condenser. And finally, for today anyway, a Zoom H1 Handy Field Recorder. I'll explain what these microphones are, their strengths, weaknesses, I'll do a demonstration for you. Then at the end of the video, I'll play some audio snippets of all of these four back to back with some commonly used audio processing effects. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by you. Please visit my website to have your name or brand logo displayed here. Thank you so much for your support. So this is our baseline for today. It's what I've been using on the channel for the last year or so, and I've owned this Shure SM58 for probably 15 going on 20 years. It's a $100 microphone, but they are super rugged and durable. You buy one of these and it'll probably outlive you. Now this is a dynamic stage vocal microphone intended for live use really, but it does a pretty good job, job of capturing audio in these kind of situations as well. And rumor has it, that Bono uses this to record his studio vocals as well. I'm not sure about this, but I did just check Wikipedia and this together with the SM57 are the best selling microphones in the world. They've been making this one since 1969 and the design is pretty much unchanged since then. So a pretty awesome tool to have in your arsenal. This mic has a cardioid pattern, which means that it is more sensitive at the front or the top here and it does reject noise coming in from the side and this one needs an XLR microphone connector and you will need an audio interface to connect it to your PC if you are recording audio on your PC. Okay let's move on to the next microphone you will be able to hear the sound now of the AT2020 condenser microphone. Now this microphone, the 2020, has been extremely difficult to capture through no fault of the microphone, I might add. The first couple of takes were ruined because there was a very low frequency 100 hertz humming noise. At first I thought it might be an issue with the microphone, but it wasn't. After a lot of detective work and troubleshooting, I realised that my PC under the desk was touching the leg of the table and the vibrations from the fans was coming up through the desk, through the microphone arm and into the microphone and being picked up and it ruined the recording. So lesson learned, these are extremely sensitive microphones, these condensers, they pick up the faintest of sounds. So you have to be really careful about the environment in which you're using it. And there were also some takes where I forgot to switch on the camera, but hopefully we are up and rolling now. So this is an inexpensive studio large diaphragm condenser microphone. And hopefully you can hear that the quality of the audio is much better than on the shore. It's a crisper sound with more detail, especially in the high frequencies. But this one does have some circuitry that requires 48 volts called phantom power, but that's not an issue. Most of your external audio interfaces have a button which allows you to supply that to the microphone. In order to connect this one to your computer, you will need an XLR cable and an external USB audio interface. But the next microphone I'm going to show you is our Samson condenser large diaphragm microphone. And this one has a built-in audio interface and you connect it directly to the computer with a USB cable. Let's take a listen. As I was editing the audio, I could hear that the levels were slightly too hot. You probably heard that too as well. There was just a slight amount of clipping on some of the words where I was speaking loudly. So for fairness's sake and for a good comparison, I'm just recording this little segment with you again right now with the levels set perfectly. On the Focusrite preamp, you can adjust the input gain. And for the Shure, I typically have it maxed out at about five o'clock. But for this one, you need to back it down to about two or three o'clock, and then it sounds a lot better. Okay, so now you are hearing the sound of the Samsung C01U Pro, C01U Pro large diaphragm condenser microphone. But the difference between this and the one we had before is that this is connected directly to the computer with just a USB lead here. So no need for 
these XLR microphone cables or for an external USB audio interface. So this wins on convenience for many applications. So this is a great choice for simplicity if you're, for example, putting together a podcast. But some audio engineers would turn their nose up at these a little bit because they say the internal circuitry and the audio converters aren't as good quality as what you get in a dedicated USB audio interface. That might be the case perhaps for a real high-end audio interface. But when you compare this with my $100 Focusrite, I don't really think there's a huge amount of difference. So this would be an excellent choice if you're looking for a simple solution to record a podcast or capture yourself singing or playing an instrument. All of these, by the way, work excellently to capture the sound of instruments if you're playing a saxophone or guitar or whatever it might be. And just like with the previous microphones, I'm capturing the audio direct into my Reaper DAW right here. And remember that for all of these microphones, you will need to synchronize the audio with the video from your camera in post-production as you're editing the video, an extra step that you'll need to do. But for the improved audio quality, I think it'll be worth it. Okay, so now you are hearing the sound of the Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. You'll probably immediately be able to hear that this one is stereo, whereas all the, the other ones were mono. Not only is it stereo, but it's somewhat more omnidirectional. It is more sensitive to sound coming in this direction, but it does pick up a lot more of the sounds going on around it. Now the beauty of this device then is that you can record directly to the computer with a USB cable just like I'm doing right now into Reaper but you can disconnect it, it's got a memory card and you can record directly to the memory card wherever you might be so it's a great tool for recording when you don't have a computer available say you are capturing the sound of your band doing a gig or doing an interview with someone out on location for that it's really ideal then of course you come back to the studio and you transfer the audio files you can record them in WAV or MP3 and then transfer them over to your computer for editing and post-production. There is a batch of Zooms that have a hardware issue. This is one of them, unfortunately. It's a bit annoying. If you leave this one uh, overnight with the batteries in, then it will completely drain the batteries by the morning, even if you switch it off. So you have to remember to take out the batteries, and then unfortunately you lose all your settings like the date and time. Okay, and just for giggles, now for comparison, here is the sound of the audio recorded on the cameras. This is a Canon DSLR on the built-in microphones on the camera, just so you can compare. Now, what we're going to do now is to play through all four of these microphones. I recorded a short snippet of me saying a phrase, and I'll add just a little bit of compression and EQ, which you would typically do to a vocal recording. You'll be able to hear how these sound back to back. I should also mention that I have volume normalized all of these clips that you heard before and coming up just so that it's a fair comparison. And no, I'm not a voiceover guy. My voice is what it is and I don't have great diction or technique, but I think still a valid comparison of the four microphones. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Her purse was full of useless trash. Okay, what did you think about the sound of those mics? Or perhaps you have some recommendations for other microphones that I should consider or the viewers should consider. Please do leave a note down in the comments. Now, I do have some other microphones that are super interesting for making YouTube videos, but this was going on long enough, so I think we'll do it in a separate video. But what I'm talking about is a lavalier microphone here that you clip to your shirt or your lapel. Uh, this is a wireless system that we'll talk about as well. That's a really good choice if you're talking to camera. We have a headset microphone that you, you know, put on your head. I can also demonstrate this for you if you like. That's kind of interesting. And I have one of these 
shotgun style mics that you attach on top of the camera. So I'll be happy to demonstrate those for you as well. But as I say, I think this video has gone on long enough. I don't wanna to give too many choices to you right now. So we'll do that separately in the future. So please do remember to subscribe if you want to see that. Now, thank you ever so much for watching then, liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to my channel sponsors. And I will see you again soon. Cheerio.